Church, say amen. amen. Clap your hands for the word of God. Today. Yeah. Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Thank God for his presence. The word says the very present help in the time of trouble. John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35 are read. I'm just going to read verses 32 through 35, and we'll go back and review the entire pericope for this word is not for just one person, it's for all of us who are followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, I assure you, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the real bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus, is Jesus is the bread of life. The bread of life. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus, is Jesus is the bread of life. The bread of life. You may be seated. Jesus is the bread of life. Bread is a staple of the human diet. People need physical bread and spiritual bread in order to live. According to nutrition specialists, the best type of bread is whole wheat bread. Whole wheat bread is low in saturated fat and very low in cholesterol. It is also a good source of dietary fiber and a very good source of manganese and selenium. Even though this is good food for our physical bodies, it is not at the same standard or anywhere close to the standard that Jesus provides for our spiritual bodies. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. This means that he is the source of our salvation. We have eternal life through accepting his death as forgiveness of our sins. Many people have, it, uh, have it, as the young folks say, they got it twisted. They think that the church is simply a place where people gather to hear a word from God. But the church is the universal body of Christ that has accepted his death as the atonement for their sins. And by partaking in the Lord's Supper, you are not saved by participating in the Lord's Supper. You are saying that this is a symbol of what you have already professed because of your faith. We have a God that who has sent his son because he loved us so much that he gave his only son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We have eternal life through accepting Jesus' death, the death of his physical body as atonement for our sins. The church must be intentional. Everybody say intentional. We must be intentional in our message of salvation. In other words, we cannot be around the bush when it comes to salvation. You have to ask the question to someone who may not be sure if they were to die, do they know where they would spend eternity? You have to be intentional. Everybody say intentional. You have to ask people, even within the four walls of the church, have you accepted Christ as your personal Savior? There's no middle ground. It's either yes or no. It's not cold nor hot. You can't be lukewarm. You have to be sure. Touch your neighbor and say be sure. You have to be sure that you are saved. We cannot be effective witnesses if we are not clear about the truth about Jesus. Jesus is more than just a miracle worker. I know Rance Allen said that he's a miracle worker, but he's more than a miracle worker. 
We have to be clear that Jesus is more than a way maker. He is more than just a preacher. Jesus is the son of God who was sent to die for the sins of the world. And only through him, he said in his word, he says, no man come to the father but by me. Jesus is more than a miracle worker. This is why some people only follow him, but only for what he can do for them. He's more than a great preacher. Many people are like the parable. When they hear a good word, they're ready to receive it. But when the tests of life come and the troubles of life become to, to toss them to and fro like an angry sea, they are just like the man in the parable. They are allowing the devil to steal their joy. Jesus is more than a miracle worker. He's more than a great preacher. He's more than a way maker. Jesus is the bread of life. Many of our churches are known for many things, but how many of our churches are known for winning lost souls for Jesus? In other words, we ought to not take uh, the Lord's Supper lightly. This is more than just eating uh, some crackers and drinking some grape juice. Uh, and many churches have stopped serving wine because they're afraid that it's going to cause someone uh, to relapse back into drinking. But this is not about uh, what's in the containments of the drink or the bread. It's about what we understand and what we believe that it was nobody but Jesus that could have saved our sin sick soul. John chapter 6 records the saying, the I am sayings of Jesus. Jesus is recorded in 635 that say that he is the bread of life. The people wanted to meet Jesus to meet their physical needs and not their spiritual needs. Many people are suffering today physically, suffering due to a lack of access to health care, suffering because of a lack of access to food. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, one in every four households in America are food insecure. They are food deficient, meaning that people don't even have enough bread to make it through the day in this great country that we call America. And even while people are suffering in their physical body, in their physical man, the Bible helps us to understand that it is good to be fed physically, but Jesus also told the young lawyer there what profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul. What that means is that you can have all of your physical needs met, but still be starving spiritually. You'll be starving because your life will lack the fulfillment it needs. You will be starving because you will be dependent on others to pray for you instead of learning to pray for yourself. You will be starving because it just seems like you are going through the motions of life because the songs don't sound as strong the the spirit is not moving the way that you remember because God is looking for you to be serious about your salvation. This is why Paul told the church to work out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. It does not mean that you can be working to be saved, but you will be working because you're saved. Touch your neighbor and say, we got work to do. The people wanted Jesus to do something for them, but they didn't want to do something for Jesus. The manna that came to the Jews to sustain physical life, but Jesus came not to just sustain physical life. He came so that the whole world would have spiritual life. In other words, if we die in Christ, the Bible says we are a new creature. If we die in this physical body because uh, as followers of Christ, we are guaranteed, the text they would say guaranteed, we're guaranteed to live again. Just as you take food into your own body, so you can take Christ into your life and he becomes one with you. The disciples had the opportunity in chapter 6 to follow the crowd, but they remained with Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, stay with Jesus. John 666 6, 6 said after Jesus told them that they must eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, they thought that he was saying that they needed to be cannibals. And it said that at that point, many turned back and walked no more with Jesus. 
Jesus asked his disciples, will you also leave me? And Peter said, whether will we go, Master, because you have the words to eternal life. Amen. How many of us would turn and follow the crowds? How many of us would stay with Jesus? My brothers and sisters, the text raises three questions for us today. And the question is, how shall we share the bread? Touch the name and say, share the bread. Many of us as Americans, we feel that it is our personal self-right to pursue our own self-interest. And we often hear people give that feeble advice to people, even Christians who are struggling and say, girl, you got to do what's best for you. Uh, we'll say, son or brother, you got to do what's best for you. Uh, but that is a lie. What you should be telling people is you need to do what pleases God. This is why the Bible says obedience. It's better than sacrifice. In other words, if you have gotten a word from God, your first obligation is to share the word. The first point in our lesson is is you got to watch God work through the church. The church neighbor say, watch God work. Verse 29 says, Jesus replied, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he has sent. God is using this word work through Jesus, the word ergozomai, which means to perform. It literally means to do business. So a church is not a place where people just gather to sit down. The church is a place where people should be doing the work of the Lord. Look at the neighbor and say, it's good to work for Jesus. One songwriter says, I've been working for Jesus a long time. And I'm not tired yet. It's amazing to me. They got so many Holy Ghost filled people in the church. But soon as they get to church, the first thing they want to do is sit down. I know you heard the song when the old church says, sit down, serve it. Sit down, sit down, and rest a little while. But those folks were working out in the cotton fields. Those folks uh, was working from sun up to sun down. What work are we doing today for Jesus? Jesus said to the disciples, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night comes that no man can work. It is important for us to understand that many of us cannot know what to do in the church until we watch others who are already a part of the church. This is why we need to evangelize. Many people have been in the church their whole life and have never seen the church go and witness to anybody. Many people have been in the church their whole life and have never seen people make a sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom. Now, you only really begin to understand what the church is about by studying the God's word and then watching those who are already a part of the church to help you understand, to coach you through some things, to give you some direction, to support you and to delegate to you the authority that God has given us which is the church. He said to Peter, he said, Thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. You need to learn how to have a statement in your spirit uh, and say, devil, I ain't scared of you. Uh, the devil is running people out of the church uh, by getting mad at people uh, and by talking about people, uh, by scandalizing our names uh, and by disrupting uh, the assembly of the saints. Uh, but you need to look at your neighbor and say, I ain't scared of the devil. And the reason why you shouldn't be scared because you know that you've got work to do. See, the devil ain't going after the folks who are sitting down doing nothing. He's going after the people that got a prayer in their spirit. They got their sleeves rolled up and they have made up their mind that they're going to do the work of God. Isn't it like the devil to get in your car engine on Sunday morning when it's time to go to church? Isn't it like the devil to get in your husband or your wife or your children and frustrate you so you won't go to the house of the Lord? But touch your neighbor and say, I got work to do. The work of God is done through the church. Jesus did not see the miracle of the 5,000 as a way to be a people pleaser. Jesus did the feeding of the 5,000 to please the almighty God. 
This is why he was able to work the miracle. He asked them what they had, and they said, all we have is a child's lunch. And he told them to bring whatever they had to him. And the Bible says he blessed the bread. He, he broke the bread, and as he was still breaking, he fed 5,000 men, and he also fed women and children. After many got their fish sandwich, the Bible tells us that they were ready to leave him because he said, because of signs and wonders many of you only believe but it wasn't about the signs and wonders it was about the work that God was going to do through Christ on a place called Calvary many people have followed Jesus for some fish sandwiches and some loaves of bread but how many of us will follow him all the way to Calvary because this is where the shedding of the blood will give us forgiveness Church name say, watch God work. So after a period of observation, the second step that you take is, is you worship God in spirit and in truth. Church name say, worship God. After watching God, seeing that God did things that you could not do, uh, that he was causing, and it still is causing, uh, the sun to shine, and the rain to fall, and the wind to blow, uh, and the worlds to twirl, because God did all of that, and by being a natural theologian, you already understand intuitively that the work of God is still present in you and around you. Uh, now you, as a believer, can be led to, to worship God. But this is the problem with the modern church. Many people do not understand what worship really is. Worship is not church attendance. Worship is not checking a box and keeping your name on the world. Worship is something that you are giving worth to that is beyond you. And the problem with the 21st century church is many people think that it's still about them. This is why they threaten to leave the church when somebody makes them mad. This is why they threaten to quit things when things don't go their way. This is why people stop giving because the church does not support their agenda. But touch your neighbor and say, the devil is a liar. This is not about you. This is not about your hairdo. This is not about your $37 shoes. This is about the spirit of the living God. This is why Jesus told the woman at the well that God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Verse 35 clearly tells us, Jesus says that he comes because he is the bread of life. He said, no one who comes to me will ever be hungry. That word comes, comes from the word erhomai, which means to move. Touch your neighbor and say move. That word erhomai means to become. Touch your neighbor and say become. The word erhomai means to make it happen. Touch your neighbor and say make it happen. See, when worship is no longer about you, then you can get out of self and you can fulfill the scripture that says deny self and take up your cross and follow me. Many people are just coming to church. They're not really worshiping God. People are coming to church for what the church can do for them and not asking in return what they can do for the church. But Jesus is not just a miracle worker. He, he's worked a miracle in my life and a miracle in your life. But he didn't do that just so you could come in the church and sit down. He came so that you could proclaim that he is spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Disciples were at a crossroads. They were either A, going to be subject to the criticism of the crowds and acquiesce to everything they had watched Jesus do over the past year, or either B, they could be committed to, to Christ in spite of the criticism. <laughs> See, some of us are still at that phase where we can't worship God while folk are talking about us. They're looking at your bills, uh, stacking up. They're looking at your lights getting cut off. They're looking at, uh, at that people turning their backs on you, walking out on you, and saying, I knew that God was going to leave you hanging. Uh, but look at your neighbor and say, you can't worry about them. You got to worship God in spite of. This is where your faith becomes real. It's because in spite of public criticism, you know that you have a personal relationship. Don't your neighbor say this thing is personal. 
When you worship God in spirit and in truth, you know how to study the word of God as your daily bread. This is why in the Lord's Prayer, he taught them that give us this day our daily bread. That all of your blessings really don't come from man. Man can feed you today and talk about you tomorrow. All your blessings don't come from your friends because they'll be your friends when you like them. But when you disagree with them, they'll turn their back on you. The daily where we get only comes from the word of God. I love this text so much because Jesus is authentic in who he is. He's not afraid of public criticism. Not afraid of folks talking about him because he not only knew who he was, but he knew what his mission was. That's why you as a believer have to know what submission is. You can't be in submission until you know what the mission is. And so when you are under the mission, now you can be submissive. And you got to be careful, Mount Emmanuel, who you listen to around here. A lot of folks talk about God, but they don't really count God any way holy because they don't know how to be submissive. Watch God work through the church. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Thirdly, you got to witness God's goodness to the world. Touch the name and say, be a witness. Look at the B clause of verse 35. It says unto us very clearly, he says, no one who comes to me will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. Jesus used the word believe which were the word pisteo, which means to entrust. It means to have faith. It literally means to have a clear conscience. God is so good that through faith, he'll give you peace of mind. I wouldn't go to the church for folk drive me crazy. I wouldn't be married to nobody that make me want to have to sleep in the living room. I wouldn't work nowhere where I got to fight and cuss and so folk out every day. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Bible says that he will give you a peace and surpass it all understanding. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God has been so good to me. Because if he hadn't been good to me, I wouldn't know what to tell you about him. And when I tell you that he's good, I'm not just telling you that he's been good to me. I'm also telling you that God is good for me. This is why the songwriter says God is able just to carry you through. It says make no difference what the world may do. It says put your trust in Jesus and he will see you through. It's looking to neighbor say God is able. When you learn how to be a witness, you're not just witnessing with your words, you're witnessing with your life. That means God has changed your character. And that means that when you hear that Jesus says that he is the light of the world, by following him, you also are the light of the world. That means you ought to have a swag in your walk. You ought to have a countenance about yourself that knows that if you exalt God, he will humble you. And if you will humble yourself, God will exalt you. And I'm so glad that God is that good that he'll make my enemies my footstool. I ain't got to worry about kicking folk back and kicking folk down and talking about folk who talking about me. All I got to do is to be a witness. And a witness is one that's going to tell the truth. A witness is going to be called to the stand. And they're going to put their hand on a Bible. And the, the, the bailiff is going to say, you swear to tell the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. And so help you, God. And the witness is going to say, I swear. And let me tell you how good God is. He'll do more than put food on your table. He'll do more than put clothes on your back. I'm a living witness and he'll put a running in your feet. And he'll put clapping in your hands. So I don't know about you today, but Jesus Christ, he is the bread of life. He is the true bread that the soul is given richness and joy. He is the true bread that gives life new being. 
our bodies cannot live without physical food, but our spirit can't live without spiritual food. And if you don't have Christ in your life, then your life does not have real meaning. I'm so glad the hymn writer said it's because he lives. I can face uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's because uh, he lives. All fear uh, is gone. Uh, it says because I know uh, he holds the future uh, and life is worth uh, living uh, just because he lives. Uh, I gotta close and tell you a story. Some of us still don't know why God really saved us. Some of us still don't know why we are in the church. But I gotta tell you, God will help you to understand why you're still here. Somebody say, through it all, through it all, there was a day that a bread salesman, amen, he came door to door trying to sell some bread. And as he walked up to his next house, he noticed a little boy that was sitting on the doorstep. The bread salesman had the bread in his hand. He said, is your mother home? The salesman asked the little boy. The little boy Lord God and say, yeah, my mother is at home. The man stepped out, the little boy, with the loaf of bread in his hand, and he rang the doorbell, but he didn't get an answer. He knocked on the door, he still didn't get an answer. He waited and he waited with his loaf of bread, but nobody still came to the door. He turned uh, to the little boy. He said, I thought you said that your mother was at home. The little boy replied, he said, she is, but I don't live in this house. Touch your neighbor and say, I know where my daddy is. I know where my Jesus is. I know where the Spirit is. And because they live in this house, you ought to know that you know that you know that you're saved. No matter what people may say, you ought to have some joy on the inside. You ought to have some love. You ought to have some peace. You ought to have some goodness. You ought to have some meekness. You ought to have some endurance. You ought to have some joy. Does your neighbor say joy? I got joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about who he is to me. Anybody got joy? This bread that gives us joy, it's not the wonder bread, it's not from eagles, it's not from Milo. This bread that comes to us is the bread of heaven. Raise your hand and say, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Is there anybody here that glad they got Jesus? Glad they got Jesus. Anybody glad? I'm glad. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got joy. Anybody got joy? If they got joy, wave your hands and say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. of life.
Let us say it. Let us say, glad I got Jesus.